This meeting is being recorded. Well, good afternoon. Um, my name is Linda Bessmer, and I'm here with my partner, Dr. Carl Franklin. And we're with Muses 3. We help support Mayan, Freckle, La Lilo, and Schoolzilla by Renaissance. Are you all good there? Yeah. Oh, okay, perfect. We weren't sure what you might already know about La Lilo or if there's specific things um, that you wanted to see. My plan was to show you just a, a very few slides to give you the framework of the program, then take you into the teacher dashboard so that you could see what student data look like and the kinds of things that teachers could do and then take you in to show you the student experience. Does that sound like that might meet your needs? Sure. That sounds okay. good. I, I know nothing. I know Sharon. Right. I've more. worked with it. So my kids are already working on the free aspect of it. Okay. So I'm, I've learned a little bit about it. My plan hand doesn't know anything about it. So. Okay. Perfect. Well, I'm going to start then by um, sharing my screen and I'll share my, my presentation. And let's see, I'm just going to have to move it down a little bit so I can get it into slideshow mode here. There we go. At Renaissance, the mission of the company is to accelerate learning for all children and adults of all ability levels and ethnic and social backgrounds worldwide. And hopefully you'll see how La Lilo can help fit into that mission. The program is actually split up into um, four different components, if you will. There's a placement piece. There's the learning that actually takes place with the student. The insights are from the data and reporting that teachers can access. And then there are there is a whole system of rewards that are provided for students. The placement function takes about 10 to 15 minutes. It's split up into two sections and it's a total of 30 adaptive questions. And as the student works through those questions, it actually places the students in the La Lilo program across a, a number of different domains. And it's, everything is presented to the student as an adventure as opposed to an assessment or a test and students are explorers. So they're encouraged to get ready to explore the world of language. The lessons that students work with are split into two different types. Lessons can actually be assigned by the teacher and you might not have been able to see that in the free version of the program. And then students can actually work through the different domains or the different strands of the program based on the placement function and where they were placed in that initial um, assessment. La Lilo does take very much a foundational literacy component and supports the science of reading. The literacy components that it addresses are things like phonological awareness, phonics, fluency, vocabulary, and comprehension. And you'll see those different strands when we go into the teacher dashboard. And students actually work in a series of different worlds. Again, they have a self-guided placement. They can use the program both at home and at school. And periodically, the program will ask the student did you like the lesson that you just completed? Was it too hard, too easy, too difficult? And do you want more problems that are the same, easier or harder? So it really does provide more direction or the ability for the student to direct their learning a little bit more. And again, we're going to go in and take a look at the teacher dashboard just so that you can see what the data actually looks like. You can see what happens on a day-to-day -day basis. The program is TEKS aligned, but the uh, TEKS alignment is not going to be visible in the program until sometime this fall. So right now we have a 
paper alignment, but in the fall, at, at some point, you'll be able to actually run reports, state standard reports, and select Texas and the TEKS so that you can actually see how students are doing based on the TEKS learning objectives. And again, you can actually go in and see specific problems students worked. When students get those problems incorrect, you can actually see the incorrect answer that the student selected. So that gives you more insight into what might be going on with the student. I, again, um, doing kind of that analysis, that wrong answer analysis can tell you quite a bit. The lessons are actually designed so that if a student is missing a specific area, La Levo's actually as you can see up here, it says lessons marked with red or orange will be reassigned to the student automatically. So you don't have to go back in and assign areas where students are struggling, but they're made very evident to you as the teacher so that you can see here's an area where I might want to spend more time or provide some additional instruction for students if they're struggling. And then La Lilo does use the Schoolzilla dashboard which you, is also available for the Renaissance Star program and some of the other programs that Fort Bend ISD uses. And it gives you more of a global picture. So the administrative dashboard, so that what would be available for the building principal and other key stakeholders is going to give you a, a different view where you can look at a teacher's classroom or you can look at specific grade levels and see how students are doing across all kindergarten classrooms or across all the grade levels in the school. And then students actually receive rewards as they're working through the program. So students then can collect um, treasures. And so that's a little bit of the gamification and then when you have so many treasures, then you actually earn badges. And when you have a certain number of badges earned, then you actually unlock a new environment. And there are 14 different environments or worlds. And the students actually unlock stories that are comprehension stories that are in that environment. So students get to explore different ecosystems and different worlds and the stories fit right into those. And so we do have some specific stories, but I'd like to just get out of this unless there are any questions and actually take you into the program itself. And I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Let's see. And when you first log into La Lilo, this is what the teacher dashboard looks like. This is my class board snapshot. I'm just going to minimize the, I have to move my people, my thumbnails so that I can see the whole, whole dashboard here. And you can set the class snapshot to be the current week or uh, the previous. It gives you an idea of what all the students in your class roster are doing, areas that they've mastered, areas, lessons that they're still working on, and then areas where they need help. And these are all, um, as you see, all I have to do is hover, and I can see that my student, Emma, is having problems with the word the. She's having problems with the short A, the word family with at, the uh, letter M and the letter T. So I can actually drill down and look very specifically then at something like sight words and see the type of question that Emma had and whether she got that correct or incorrect. So again, it, it really gives you the ability to drill down and, and look with quite a bit of of detail for students. And you can also then see what the weekly student activity is, how much time students are spending working in the program, the number of questions that they've answered, 
and you can see I've got two students that are having problems with the letter M and two students that are having problems with that word family at. So I might want to actually pull those two students into a small group and do some individual instruction with them in areas where they're struggling. And then I can also see I don't have any students that have completed any worlds this week. So this is really very much intended to be a high level view of my classroom and what's going on with my students. When I go to the dashboard, I can actually look at the different strands in the program and see where my students are with regard to phonology, phonics, and spelling. Areas that are the solid color green means that the student has not um, done any learning or any lessons in that area. If it's marked pink, that's an area where the student is struggling or needs more support. Areas that have the hash uh, tag or hash line through it are areas where the student actually placed out of that content. And then a, a rectangle that has the outline around it, that's that my student Lucia is actually working on the letter S. So that's a lesson that's currently in progress right now. And the same would be true for sight words, again, word family, comprehension, and then grammar and conventions. Again, it's going to show me where students are in each of those different strands. And then as a teacher, as we covered in um, that quick overview, we do also have the ability to actually make assignments. So I can go in and I can add an assignment and I uh, know that my student Emma was having some problems and she was having problems with the word family at. So I'm gonna take a look at this and I know she's having problems with the uh, short letter A as well. So maybe we're gonna look at some of these related word families like am and add, and I'm going to just go ahead and assign those to Emma. So these are all now assigned to that particular student. And I do have the reminder up here that I really didn't need to assign Emma the at word family because that's one that La Lila would automatically revisit because that's an area where she's struggling. What I'd like to do is show you the student view and this is teacher mode so I just clicked on student view. I'm going to go ahead and click on the beginning area. Click on your classroom to begin. And a teacher might have di different classes set up so this is this is by a particular class. And again, this lets me see into all the students that are in my roster. I want to, we're gonna take a look at Emma and see some of those assignments she has, but I want to show you Lilo demo first. And this particular student is at the placement level. So I wanna show you just real quickly a little bit of the placement function. And Carl, can you hear the audio? No? Okay. Okay, so let me see if you can hear the audio now. Hello, Explorer. Are you ready to go on an adventure? Before we begin, We'll do some training to know exactly where you are in your learning. Concentrate and try your best so that we can find the best starting point for you in the worlds of Lalilo. When you're ready to begin, click on Let's Go. Listen carefully and click on the sound you hear. B. 
Listen carefully, then click on the letter you hear. A. S. U. Listen carefully and complete the word you hear. Heart. And the, again, this is the placement function. So you can see we started with word uh, with letter sounds, and then we looked at letter recognition. Now we're looking at words and word recognition. I'm going to go ahead and back out of this. Now and click on your name. And again, the placement function takes about um, 10 to 15 minutes and it has two, two short segments. So that first segment that I was going through might take about five minutes and then there'll be a second one. And that again, will place the student across all those different areas, the phonological awareness, phonemes, spelling, the sight words, word recognition, et cetera. So now let's take a look at our student, Emma. Choose the word that completes the sentence. I sit on the mat. Listen carefully. I sit on the mat. A bat flies at night. Listen carefully. A bat flies at night. The cat likes to jump. You're working hard. Keep it up. Choose the word that rhymes with the word you hear. Pat, mop, mat, bat, cat, cup, cat, sat, fed, fat, but you can hopefully see a, a little bit more there. I'd like to take you into now, a click scene, on your name. Um, that's a little bit further along. And my students, Samuel and William, are a little bit further along here. Click on all the verbs. There are three correct answers. C. Sit. Run. Fox, pot, see, sit, run, sit, see. There are three correct answers. Sat, hit. Win, nut, pit, sat, hit, win. Click on all the nouns. There are three correct answers. Yes. Kid, jam. Bed. Did. And of course, jam is a hard one because jam can be a verb as well as a noun. But if I look at my other words, I can probably Kid. infer Bed. that jam's the only other one that might be jam a noun. <laughs>
Great job. And this student is working in the um, grammar and conventions um, strand. Incredible. You earned the final badge to unlock your reward story. So, Linda, I have a question. How do, do they go through one strand before they go on to the next strand? No, not necessarily. The student will be, let me um, just stop sharing here for a moment. The student will be working in the phonological awareness, the phonics and the spelling concurrently with sight words and word families, okay. but they'll need to get a certain amount of that learning done before they can move into the comprehension strand and then the grammar and convention strand because the if you don't know your letters and your letter sounds and how letters make up words and word families, it's going to be difficult for the reading comprehension and then understanding things like the grammar and convention. It is a little bit of a spiral curriculum where, okay. it, again, it's it, there will be some building that goes on there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. Thank you. That's what I thought was that I saw happening, but I just wanted to make sure. Oh, sure. Let me go back to sharing my screen and I wanted to take you into another student. Now there, there is another component in here, the way that my demo students are set up, they reset every night. So they're never quite in the same place that I think they are. Um, it, so it, it can be a little bit difficult, but there is a component where students can um, actually use the microphone and they will record, they'll be asked to say the word, they'll hear the word, they're asked to say the word aloud. And again, it'll say, ha have an adult help you or with the permission of your teacher, go ahead and use the microphone. And then the teacher can actually go back and in the student record when the teacher is going through the student, um, that teacher dashboard, the teacher can actually listen to the student's pronunciation of the words. So I think that's a, a key piece. But let me um, just real quickly go back and we'll, I'm sorry, we'll go back and I know some folks may need to go. Let me um, take you into a different student. Look though. and listen carefully. And you hear. Sorry. W as in whistle. So again, you can w see this student is whistle. Um, again, a little bit further along. Look and pick the appropriate sound. Th, ch, w. And again, that's a little bit more difficult. The student can replay them if they need to. Ch, w. Th, th, w. Now click on your name. But the student um, will be asked. Hello. Click on your classroom to begin. The student will be asked to make their own words. So they'll be given word parts and make their own words um, and eventually make their own sentences and use the closed procedure to fill in the word that would that either the picture is illustrating or the word that would complete the sentence in the best manner. And I, I'm just trying to be sensitive to your time frame because I know some of your folks had had a restricted time limit. Are there other specific kinds of things that that you would like to see or any other questions that you have on the program? It's designed for kindergarten through grade two. We do see it being used up through grade um, three for students that might be struggling. And we also, quite frankly, have 
some students in both middle school and high school that are English language learners using the program as well. Again, because it, it is going to cover those foundational literacy skills when someone is acquiring English, whether they're a native English speaker or someone who is acquiring English as a second language. I had a question about comprehension. Do you have an example of what a comprehension question that you might have? Sure. Let me go back to the teacher dashboard. Hang on. Now click on your name. Hello. Click on your classroom to begin. Hang on. Here's my teacher dashboard. Sorry. So if I go back to my dashboard and go to comprehension, I think I can go in here. This is a book you can read by yourself. You will answer questions as you read. The Four R's by Wendy Donner. In this book, you will learn about what happens to the things we don't need anymore. You will read about the four R's, reduce, reuse, recycle, and rot. You will see these words in the book. Click on each word to hear it read. Then click the arrow to move on. Recycled. Something new made from something old. And you can see it's going to give me the definitions there. I'll go ahead and move into the book for you all. Read the words. If you need help, you can click on a word to have it read. But do your best to read by yourself before you ask for help. Happens. I borrowed and returned a library book. Is this for using or recycling? What's your guess, group? Reusing. Reusing. You're right. When you borrow books from the library that other people have already read, you are reusing the books. What does it mean to rot? To turn into soil or become part of the earth. That's right. Rot means to break down and go back to the earth. What is one thing people do that hurts the earth? throw things in the trash. That's right. When you throw things in the trash, they go to a landfill and it harms the earth. So, excuse me. So Linda, on those questions, I just click on it. Will it read me what it says without making that my answer choice? What, will it voice each of the answers? Correct. Without making that my choice. I have to click the check mark to make my choice, right? You, you, okay. Yes, that, that, that's okay. correct. And I, let me see if I can go back. I think because I've answered the questions, it's not. Right. Right. What does it mean to rock? That's a good question. I can explore Hello. that. Um, Click on your class. And find out for you and, and report back. 
and just see whether or not it would read the different answer choices to me without me selecting that answer choice. I'd be happy to explore that for you. I'm sorry, I don't know. That's okay. And also, are, we saw level G on there. Is that leveled with Fountas and Pinnell? Yes. Yes, so the different, the different comprehension levels, it does correspond. So when, hang on just a moment. Let me get back here. And when I go back to my teacher dashboard, let's see. When I go to assignments and then hang on. All right, let me go back to my class snapshot, my dashboard. Yes, the, the comprehension levels, I was just going back just to, to double check. So in comprehension, the different levels do correspond and you can um, look at a level that has not yet been tackled yet. And there, we have scope and sequence documents as well, but you can go in and, and see what those different, what the different levels would look like and okay. examples of the content that's available at those levels. But you can see it goes up to about level M. And if you think about your K through two, that's about your range as far as the guided reading levels. Okay. Us teachers have to run. <laughs> we have to sure. So thank you. I appreciate it. And I'm so sorry for all the confusion on the time and the day and trying to do too many things at once. <laughs>